How did this man go from being one of the most powerful and respected businessmen in the world, to a fugitive on the run from the law, to a free man in his homeland? The answer involves a daring escape plan, a former green beret, and a musical instrument box. This is the story of Carlos Ghosn, the man who fled in a box from the most heavily guarded facility in Japan. Welcome to Clever Crooks, the channel where we explore the most ingenious and audacious crimes in history. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this. Carlos Ghosn was born in Brazil to Lebanese parents, and grew up in Beirut. He studied engineering in France, and joined Renault in 1996. He became the CEO of Renault in 2005, and also the chairman of Nissan and Mitsubishi, forming a powerful alliance of carmakers that rivaled Toyota and Volkswagen. He was known as a visionary leader, a cost-cutter, and a turnaround specialist. He was also one of the highest-paid executives in the world, earning more than $15 million a year. But his success came at a price. In November 2018, he was arrested at Tokyo Airport by Japanese authorities, who accused him of under-reporting his income, misusing company funds, and breaching his fiduciary duty. He denied all the charges, and claimed he was the victim of a conspiracy by Nissan executives who opposed his plans to merge Nissan with Renault. He spent more than a year in custody or under house arrest, facing multiple interrogations, court hearings, and media scrutiny. He was not allowed to see his wife or travel abroad. He faced up to 15 years in prison if convicted, in a country where the conviction rate is over 99%. Ghosn realized that he had no chance of getting a fair trial in Japan, and that he would spend years in limbo before reaching a verdict. He also missed his wife Carol, whom he had married in 2016, and who had been campaigning for his release. In December 2019, he was told by the court that he could not communicate with her for six months, as part of his bail conditions. This was the last straw for Ghosn. He decided to take matters into his own hands, and find a way out of Japan. He secretly contacted his wife through encrypted messages on a burner phone that she had smuggled into his apartment. He also reached out to his Lebanese friends Ali and George, not their real names, who were businessmen with connections in the Middle East. They agreed to help him escape, and contacted Michael Taylor, an American ex-soldier who had experience in extracting people from dangerous situations. Taylor had worked as a private security contractor in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other conflict zones. He had also performed several rescue missions for kidnapped or arrested Americans abroad. He was known as Captain America among his peers, for his bravery and patriotism. On the evening of December 29, 2019, Ghosn put on a hat, a mask, and glasses, and walked out of his apartment in Tokyo. He had two bags with him, containing some clothes and personal items. He hailed a taxi and headed to Shinagawa Station, one of the busiest in the city. There, he met Taylor and another accomplice, who had flown in from Dubai earlier that day. They boarded a bullet train to Osaka, a journey of about three hours. They arrived at Osaka Station around 8 p.m., and took another taxi to a hotel near Kansai International Airport. The hotel was chosen because it had a large entrance that could accommodate a van, and because it was close to the airport's cargo terminal. In the hotel parking lot, they had parked a van that contained a large box that was used to transport musical equipment. The box was black, with holes drilled on the sides for ventilation. It measured about 2 meters long, 1 meter wide, and 80 centimeters high. It weighed about 200 kilograms when empty, and had wheels and handles for easy movement. In the hotel room, Ghosn changed his clothes and got into the box. He lay down on some foam cushions and blankets that were placed inside. He had some water bottles, snacks, and medication with him. He also had a phone that he could use to communicate with Taylor in case of emergency. Taylor and his accomplice closed the lid of the box and sealed it with tape. They then wheeled the box to the van and loaded it in the back. They drove to the airport's cargo terminal, where they had arranged to meet some airport workers who were in on the plan. They showed them some fake documents that claimed the box contained audio equipment for a concert in Dubai. They also paid them some cash to look the other way. They avoided the X-ray machines and metal detectors that were used to scan the cargo, and headed straight to the tarmac. There, they met another team of workers who helped them load the box onto a private jet that was waiting for them. 
The jet was a Bombardier Global Express, with a capacity of 14 passengers and a range of 11,000 kilometers. It was chartered by Ghosn's Lebanese friends Ali and George, who had paid $350,000 for the flight. The pilot and crew were unaware of what was inside the box. They took off for Istanbul around 11 p.m., without any interference from the Japanese authorities. The private jet landed in Istanbul around 5 a.m. on December 30. There, Ghosn and his accomplices transferred to another plane that was waiting for them. They left the box behind, and boarded the plane with their passports and luggage. They flew to Beirut, where they arrived around 7 a.m. Ghosn was finally in his homeland, where he had citizenship and support. He was greeted by his wife Carol, who had flown in from Paris, and his friends Ali and George, who had arranged the escape. He also received a call from the Lebanese president, who assured him of his protection. Ghosn was free, but not safe. Japan was furious about his escape, and demanded his return. They issued an international arrest warrant for him, and asked Interpol to issue a red notice, which alerts police worldwide to locate and arrest a wanted person. They also arrested Michael Taylor and his son Peter, who had flown back to the US after the escape, and extradited them to Japan in March 2021. They pleaded guilty to helping Ghosn flee, and were sentenced to two years and one year and eight months in prison, respectively. In January 2020, Ghosn held a press conference in Beirut, where he spoke for more than two hours in front of hundreds of journalists and cameras. He defended himself against the charges he faced in Japan, and accused Nissan and Japan of injustice, conspiracy, and human rights violations. He claimed he had evidence to prove his innocence, and that he was ready to face trial anywhere else but Japan. He also revealed some details of his escape plan, but did not name anyone who helped him. He said he acted alone, and that he was willing to take full responsibility for his actions. Lebanon refused to extradite Ghosn to Japan, citing the lack of an extradition treaty between the two countries. Lebanon also considered Ghosn a national hero, who had contributed to the country's economy and reputation. Ghosn remained in Lebanon, where he lived under tight security and legal pressure. He faced several lawsuits from Nissan, Renault, and other parties, who sought to recover damages from him. He also faced some charges in France, where he was accused of tax evasion, money laundering, and misuse of funds. He denied all the allegations, and said he was ready to cooperate with the French authorities. This is how Carlos Ghosn pulled off one of the most daring escapes in history. He managed to evade the Japanese justice system, and flee to a country where he felt safe and respected. He also exposed the flaws and weaknesses of Nissan's governance, Japan's legal system, and the global extradition rules. His escape sparked outrage, controversy, and fascination around the world. It also raised questions about the future of Nissan-Renault alliance, which was shaken by his arrest and departure. Ghosn's saga is not over yet, he still faces many legal challenges and risks in Lebanon and elsewhere. He also faces a loss of reputation and credibility among many people who once admired him as a business leader and a visionary. He may never be able to return to Japan or France again. But he also remains defiant and determined to clear his name and restore his honor. He claims he has nothing to hide or fear, except injustice and persecution. Thank you for watching this video from Clever Crooks channel. We hope you enjoyed this amazing story of Carlos Ghosn's escape from Japan in a box. What do you think of his escape? Do you think he is innocent or guilty? Do you think he will ever face trial or justice? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more stories of ingenious and audacious crimes in history.